Hey everyone, Luke Oswald here. I wanted to put together a quick tutorial just to show you a couple things that I like to do when using Superior Drummer 2. These are just a couple mix adjustments and also one of my favorite Easy Mix 2 presets. So what I have here is a performance from a video that I released previously. This was an Ash Sewn cover that I produced using the Progressive Foundry expansion pack for Superior Drummer 2. So that's what I have here. Let's go ahead and take a listen. This is a great sounding library, but I wanted to see if I could take this performance and use the avatar library instead. All right, so I've loaded the avatar library. This is the core library for Superior Drummer 2, and this is just the default setup. So this is what loads when you first load the plugin. All right, so I haven't made any changes to it yet. What I actually want to do is go ahead and go in and use a setup that I've not used before. So I'm going to go into this construct dropdown and choose the alt stick kit. And the reason is, is it loads some drums that I have not yet used in a video. So it's this 14 by 24 inch bass drum. I usually use the 18 by 22 or the 14 by 24 double headed. And usually I will go for the Ludwig Black Beauty or this Maple Ash snare or this Near Z Custom. I really like the Near Z Custom. It's my favorite snare of the library. But for this video, we'll go ahead and use this Slingerland 70s snare. Now I'm gonna change the hi-hat back up to the 14 inch. So the Sabian HHX Manhattan Jazz hi-hat. And I want a little bit more of a present crash here. So this Jack Dijonet crash is a bit soft to me. Compared to this HHX Evolution effects crash. So I'm gonna actually go down to this 21 inch AA Explosion crash. Feel like those match a little bit better. Everything else I'm gonna leave the same. Actually, let's get rid of this floor tom. I just want these three toms. Another thing to note is we're using clear heads on the toms. A lot of times I'll go for the coated heads, but in this case, we're using clear heads, so a little bit of a different sound. Within our mixer, there are no effects, nothing is going on, and there's nothing on my drum bus either. So let's take a listen to what this performance sounds like with this alt stick kit. So really pretty good sound and I do want to mention I have gone through and made some velocity curve adjustments so you can see here there's some different curve settings for the toms, the bass drum, the hi-hat. So these are just my own custom curves based on my playing and the equipment that I'm using. But other than that there's no processing going on. However, I want to make a couple of changes. I feel like the bass drum is a bit weak and I want to bring that up in the mix a little bit. I like a nice present bass drum. Now I could increase the volume. However, I'm going to do it in a little bit more of a creative way. The first thing I'm going to do is actually lower the pitch of the bass drum. So we'll just go to the pitch dial and I'm just going to go down to negative two and hit fix so it loads the higher quality samples with that pitch change. And then I'm going to go into the mixer and I want to take a listen to this kick sub. One way you can get a more present bass drum is by using a sub kick channel. And of course you could raise volume, which I am going to do, but I'm going to manipulate the actual sound of the sub kick as well. So let's solo the sub kick and let me just play through this performance. Take a listen to the sound of this channel. So you have some sub frequencies there, but there's some higher frequencies going on. Listen again, you can hear some of those higher frequencies. I wanna get rid of that. So what I'm wanting to do is really get some low sub frequencies only within this kick sub channel. So one way we can do that is to add a filter. So we're on the kick sub channel and I'm going to roll off pretty much everything above 500 hertz. And then I'm going to do a, 
slight roll off. So we're getting rid of the very, very low frequencies that we don't need, but I'm going to change this type. We're gonna go from low to high, and you can see that puts a little bit of a boost on the low end. We still have a nice roll off, so we don't have low end information that we don't need, but we do have a little bit of a boost, and we can change this left dial here in order to move where that boost is. And really, I'm trying to get into about the 40 to 50 hertz range. So we're doing a little bit of a boost there, and then rolling off everything below that, and still doing a roll off starting at about 500 so we're just getting those sub frequencies listen to how this filter changes the sound of the sub kick and I'm actually going to boost the volume from negative 8 to negative 5 we're gonna go up 3 DB so we are increasing this channel but we're still getting rid of a lot of those higher frequencies we are going to only keep those sub frequencies so let's take a listen to what that does So depending on where you're wanting that to sit, you can get some nice low sub frequencies for the kick sub channel. I'll go ahead and turn the filter on and off so you can hear how that affects the kick sub channel. So let's go ahead and go back to the beginning of the performance and let's take a listen with the filter engaged and we have the louder kick sub frequency and the lower pitched bass drum. That allows the bass drum to sit a little bit higher in the mix. It's a little more present. And that will actually translate well into the next mix move I'm going to do. And that is to add an instance of Easy Mix 2. So we're going to add Easy Mix 2, which is also a product that TuneTrack makes. We're going to put it on our drum bus. And there's a couple different mastering expansions that you can purchase. I'm going to go to this first one and show you one of my favorite drum bus presets, and that's this drum enhancer. And what it does is it adds some EQ. It actually adds a bit of high-end presence and low-end presence. And there's some limiting going on as well, so you get a volume boost. I really like what this does to the drum mix. Now, it doesn't work in every occasion. If I have drums that are a bit more processed, sometimes this preset will be too much. I really like to use it though for Superior Drummer 2, especially if I'm not doing any processing. So we have a pretty clear mixer here, really nothing at all except for this filter change. So because of that, this drum enhancer preset is a great option to use. Listen to how this drastically changes the sound of our mix.
All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. If you would like to see more videos like this, let me know. Let me know what kinds of things you would like to see. Also, be sure to check out Groove3.com. I have hours of content available there. Many tutorials talking about a lot of different subjects, all related to e-drums and drum sample technology. Also, be sure to check out DrumAngle.com for the latest news, latest releases, latest lessons, and information about my electronic drum setup. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Once again, let me know what kind of videos you would like to see in the future, and I'll do what I can to make it happen for you guys. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.